afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cabletics, an inside look into the athletics department here at Bossier Parish Community College. I'm your host, Charlie Cavell, and today we're talking with Bipsy Athletic Director John Rennie about next week's NJCAA Region 14 Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. John, welcome to the show, and thanks for taking the time to visit with yeah, us. Yeah, glad to be back. Well, Bossier Parish Community College is hosting the Region 14 Basketball Tournament, which will be held March 5th through the 9th at the Gold Dome on the campus of Centenary College of Louisiana. Last year, the Region 14 Tournament was in Jacksonville, Texas. And uh, what, you know, pushed out, uh, John, what really pushed you and Bossier Parish Community College to make a bid for the 2019-2020 tournaments? Well, it, you know, we, we've been involved with, the, with Region 14 um, for a little over 10 years now. Uh, and ever since I've been a part of Bipsy Athletics, we've been in Region 14. And, and the region comes with such a rich tradition in athletics. Uh, you know, my goal has always been to us, for us to build up our, uh, our status, so to speak, within the region. And, and I think hosting an event, a champ one of the region's championship events, is just one of those, you know, one of those steps in that direction of, 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 of earning the respect and, and growing our, our athletic department. Um, and just the opportunity to bring something like that to our community and let, give that our community the exposure to the level of competition that, that the region has. Well, and it isn't just for this year. It's for also this year and for 2020. So, you know, you get get this one under your belt and then see, okay, what do we need to make better for 2020? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, we're excited because we have it for two years. Um, and, you know, we'd love to have it for – for more than that after uh, after those two years are up and we'll see what happens you know after this year why do you think that Shreveport Bossier and you know the Gold Dome is such a good location for this tournament well first off I think the Gold Dome is the ideal venue for our, our tournament um, the Gold Dome seats about 2500 and so I think seating capacity is just about right um, I personally just love the Gold Dome as a, as a playing venue. The lighting is, is great. Uh, it's just a great venue. And I think Shreveport Bossier as a community is an ideal place. Uh, you know, we have a lot to offer for fans and spectators as they come in. Um, there's going to be a ton of four-year coaches at this tournament, you know, coming to recruit and watch players and having an airport they can fly directly into, um, you know, a good – base of hotel rooms that they can they can find good rates at so I, I just I, from the beginning I thought our community offered a lot for the tournament um, it was just an ideal fit we've uh, we've hosted the the region ADs and presidents meetings quite a few times over the past few years um, a lot of it's just because the the presidents and ADs enjoy coming uh, the obviously the casinos offer something for uh, for people to do and with Louisiana Boardwalk uh, some great restaurants it's just a it's a great place to for us to host the tournament well yeah and I mean this isn't a knock against Jacksonville Texas but it's a lot easier to get in and out of and to and from Shreveport and Shreveport Bossier than it is to go to Jacksonville Texas you're you're at the crossroads of two interstate highways uh, multiple US highways plus as you mentioned the regional airport it's so convenient for a, a uh, an assistant coach who's the recruiting coordinator from a four-year school to fly in see a couple of games spend a couple of nights in the hotel or watch two or three days of the tournament and then and get right back out and meet the team somewhere on the road. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and just a, a case in point that, that justifies what you're saying, uh, this is the second year that we've had our, our women's classic in January. And this year we drew New Mexico Junior College, uh, Jones County Community College, and Northwest Florida, uh, who were all top 10 teams. And because of our location on major interstates, uh, we're able to draw from a a, a, a little bit bigger region than, than Jacksonville might or, or some of the other uh, some of the other cities in the region. Like I said, it's not a knock against them. I just, uh, you know, Shreveport Bossier is strategically located in a, in, a, in a great location. Well, take us through the bid process and how that process works in Region 14. Okay. Well, probably, I guess, four years ago uh, at our ADs and Presidents meeting, they formed a committee that developed a, an RFP, so to speak, for the, the bid process. And the way it's set up is uh, our, our, on our men's side, it's divided into two, two divisions. There's a north division and a south division. 
So currently it's set up that the North Division hosted for two years, the South Division hosted for two years, and it goes back and forth. So last year it was hosted at Jackson, in Jacksonville because they're a part of the South Division. Um, we bid on the, the tournament last spring at the, the uh, 80s and President's meeting last February. And uh, as the, we were the only North school to bid on it. And I think part of that was just a consensus among the North schools that they would like to have it here in Shreveport Bossier. Uh, so there's, a, there's some criteria laid out, uh, certain minimum seating in the venue, um, minimum number of hotel rooms, uh, and some other factors that we had no problem at all meeting those criteria. And so we worked with the Sports Commission, Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission, and, and put together the bid. And uh, fortunately, it was accepted by the, by the presidents last February. Well, and that kind of leads me into my next question about I'm sure there were a lot of moving parts and pieces and entities before you could submit a bid. For instance, the Coach Billy Montgomery Gymnasium here on our campus uh, only seats about 1,100 whereas the Gold Dome, as you mentioned earlier, seats about 2,500. So therein lies uh, the reason, one of the reasons it's not here on campus. But can you tell us about whose support you had to have in order to, to submit a solid bid? Yeah, well, I'll start with Coach Montgomery. Coach Montgomery was a, a big, big supporter of us uh, seeking out the tournament. Uh, with his role at the Sports Commission and, and just his role in the community, he, he really encouraged us to do that. Um, obviously, Dr. Bateman, our chancellor, uh, Ms. Recchi, our vice chancellor, um, I, I went through them and just kind of got their blessing on the whole process. Uh, took a lot of work for, from all of our staff. Uh, Charlie, you put a lot of work into it yourself. Um, Tina Barth is helping us out, just making sure everything's taken care of. And then partnering with the Sports Commission has been, been huge. Uh, they've been a huge help in all of it. Uh, we, we lean on them heavily for, for a large portion of the tournament. Um, and then Centenary College has been very, very helpful in, in providing facility. And uh, Marcus Manning, the athletic dir director over there, is, has just been over backwards. And he said, look, John, y'all's, you know, this is y'all's y'all's tournament. We just want to do whatever we can to, to make it the best it could be. You talked about the bid process and then getting selected. Um, when did you find out that Shreveport Bossier, but Bipsy, it was uh, awarded the bid as the, the host uh, school? And uh, how excited were you? <laughs> So we went to the AD and President's meeting for Region 14 last February. It was in Corsicana, Texas at Navarro College. And that was when we submitted the bid. And um, the, we had the AD's meeting on a Sunday evening. The AD's voted on it overwhelmingly in favor, uh, which all that does is just kind of gives a recommend, recommendation to the presidents the next morning. Uh, the presidents meet at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. They overwhelmingly accepted the bid. And so from that point, we were... We were thrilled. I mean, it was exciting for us to be the only Louisiana school in Region 14 and for the, the other schools in the region to say, you know what, we want to go to Shreveport Bossier to, to host our basketball tournament. That's a huge feather in our cap as an athletic department at Bipsy. Well, and, and I'm going to kind of combine the next couple of questions because that one you kind of answered was about, you know, just how big a deal this is to – not only to Bossier Parish Community College, but to the community as well and the, the, the basketball community inside the greater community. But I know you have some personal validation um, for being awarded the bid, not just uh, for yourself, but as the athletic director. But talk, if you will, about the level of acceptance and respect for Bipsy by the other 14 region 14 member schools all of which as you just mentioned reside across the border in texas yeah we've we've come a long way um you know we we've been competitive we've we've filled an athletic program for quite a while um but region 14 is and, and we've discussed this on this show before it's considered the sec of junior college in all sports the level of competition is second to none um, you can ask any any coach at a four-year school in any sport you know name the top three conferences in junior college and region 14 is going to be one of those that they list and so you know it's, it's very competitive and, and so for for us being the only louisiana school in a in a region in a conference that is full of tradition and all te east texas schools we've had to really work to 
to earn that respect, to um, kind of improve our status, so to speak, within the, well, within and, the region. And not to interrupt you, but to be honest, and, and you know, shoot straight, Bipsy hadn't been competitive for a while, so there wasn't a lack of respect. I mean, we talked about this not too long ago when uh, our men's team beat Tyler, that their radio broadcasters spoke to me, that, or I could hear him talking to his listeners saying, you know, Coach Chris Lovell's really done a great job with this program because no longer is Bozier Parish an easy out. They've done, had a heck of a play. And that kind of goes into that mentality of what I'm talking about, of a level of acceptance and respect. And I think this bid and getting to host this championship event kind of validates that. It, it does. It does. It absolutely does. I mean, we've, um, like I said, we've been in the region for a little over 10 years now. And uh, this is, of course, the first time that, that we've hosted any such championship event for the region. And, it, yeah, there – we have definitely worked to gain that respect in all of our sports and as an athletic department overall within the region. And it's, uh, it's very exciting for me, you know, as the athletic director of, of, the, of the department to, to earn my colleagues' respect in, in that regard and, and the coaches in the region. Um, I think you can ask any of the coaches in our region, again, in all the sports, and they would tell you there's some, a lot of good things happening at Bipsy Athletics. Well, and real quick before we take a uh, break, tell us about your new level of acceptance and appointment inside Region 14. Yeah, at the most recent meetings, I was appointed to assume the role as assistant women's director for the region, which will we'll start with next school year. Um, and again, just another, you know, to be the only Louisiana school, I, I, I hate to keep saying that, but it's it's really a big deal when, when you're uh, – you know the the lone school that's not a part of the state of Texas, and and for the ads and the presidents to to respect my uh, my position and what we've done in athletics at Bipsy and, and appoint me that that uh, this assistant women's director, it's a it's a blessing, huge blessing. We're going to take a brief time out right now, but stay tuned because following the break, we'll have more about the Region 14 basketball tournament with Bipsy athletic director John Rennie. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a covenant that split the skies over Berlin, a vow that captured Iwo Jima. A promise was made, a solemn oath that liberated Seoul, a sacred trust that defended Khe San, a pact that dug in in Da Nang, a contract that weathered Tet. A promise was made. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. A bond that patrolled door to door in Fallujah. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. A promise we all must keep. DAV fights for all veterans and their families so they get the health care, financial benefits, and support they earned. If you're a veteran who needs help or you'd like to help us keep the promise, visit DAV.org. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14? One in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours? One in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice? One in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Welcome back to Cavletics. I'm Charlie Cavell, and we're visiting with Bipsy Athletic Director John Rennie about the NJCAA Region 14 Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament, which will be held next week at Centenary's Gold Dome. So now Bipsy has been awarded the bid, John, and 
and it's not just for 2019. It does include 2020. And is that a normal process? I mean, is that the normal that it's a two-year uh, turnover? They well, like they just started that four years ago. Okay. So or, or two years ago, I should say. So Jacksonville hosted it for two years. Um, and so now it moves back to the north, which is we're in the north, and so we get it for those two years. Um, now, that doesn't mean that we couldn't host it for another two years after that. A, a school in the north can host it. It's just the south schools uh, uh, have the opportunity first to, to be that host after our two years is up. I'm sure our viewers are wondering why is the Region 14 tournament a junior college tournament being held at Centenary College and we spoke a little bit about it earlier the size of the arena and not you know like we said being held at uh, the coach Billy Montgomery gymnasium can you speak to maybe some of the particulars in the bid process yeah well you know a, a big parameter is it's not a requirement but it's preferred that it not be on campus at one of the region schools and so we we felt like I mean our best opportunity was for us to to have it at a facility that wasn't on campus here. Uh, like you mentioned, our gym doesn't quite seat um, enough. I believe the, the seating requirement is a minimum of 1,500. Um, and, and again, I, I, we just felt like the Gold Dome was an ideal venue, an ideal location with the, the, the capacity, um, the, the way the, the facility is set up. And it, you know, I think it, it's really gonna give us an opportunity to provide that kind of big time feel to the tournament. Now that you've been awarded the bid, when did you and the rest of us really begin to, you know, the sports commission as well, begin to prepare for this championship event? Well, I'm trying to think now. When we, we started working on the bid, let's see, it would have been probably October, November of 2017. Um, you know, the vote was, was granted, the bid was given to us February, uh, and so we, st we start working on it right away. I mean, you know, preparations are, have been ongoing, um, will continue to be ongoing. Uh, the, the tournament is over March 9th. We'll start preparing for 2020 on March 10th. Can you briefly walk us through some of the areas that you have to cover that maybe some people aren't quite familiar with? You know, it's not just teams showing up and playing basketball and, hey, we roll the ball out there and y'all go at it. No, it, you know, things like t tickets, T-shirts, programs, credentialing, uh, et cetera. When you put on a championship event of this caliber, there is a lot of pieces, pieces into this bigger puzzle. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned a lot of it. And, and again, I just want to uh, give kudos to the Sports Commission for, for providing a lot of assistance on all of that. Uh, but yeah, tournament t-shirts, uh, coming up with a design for the t-shirts, tournament logo, programs, gathering all the information from the teams. When you look at, we've got 13 schools total represented. Um, that we have to gather information on. And it's 13 schools, but it's a total of what, 20, 23 teams that we have to bring in information on for the program. Um, and, and let me stop you there. Yeah. From my side of things, not every school has a sports information, uh, marketing, PR type person. So a lot of those things, and, and sometimes it was left up to you mm -hmm. as, a, as a coach to deliver the headshot, the team photo, the the active roster, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, coaches just want to coach. And yeah. you can speak to that. Absolutely. Yeah, it, I mean, and in, in the past, it has fallen on us as coaches at, at Bipsy. And so it's, yeah, you, when you look at junior college sports, uh, the resources, especially human resources, personnel, is not what it is at, at, at the, what a Division One school might have. And so the, some of the slack's got to be, you know, taken by the coach or the assistant coach. And, and so we have to kind of provide, as tournament organizers, we have to provide some flexibility with those coaches and, and, and do what we can to help them in getting that information to us. Live streaming is an area that has uh, become huge, particularly at the junior college level. How does Region 14 handle its live streaming for the regional tournament? Yeah. Currently, the, the host school is responsible for the live streaming, and we will be live streaming this year's tournament. 
um, in, in all of that information will be available at, at the uh, on the Region 14 website. I know we'll put some information on our Bipsy Athletics website, especially the live streaming link. Um, so that, that's how it's worked in the past. Uh, you know, technology changes so much uh, with you know with video and live streaming that um, th there may be some changes in the future. But that's how it's that's how it's set up currently. I know you won't know the seedings for the tournament until after Saturday, but uh, can you tell us where you think the Bipsy Cavaliers and the Lady Cavaliers will be seeded and what dates and times they will likely be playing? Yeah, it's pretty much set for, for our teams where they will be seeded. The men, the men will finish up as the North number 6 seed, which will put them playing at 8 o'clock Tuesday night at the Gold Dome. Uh, the women will finish up as the 6 seed overall on the women's side, which will have them playing at 8 o'clock Wednesday night. So we've got Tuesday and Wednesday at 8. Uh, we need everybody, Cavalier fans, to come out and watch. If the guys win Tuesday at 8, they'll play again Thursday at 8. So just put on your calendar 8 o'clock every night this week. Well, and that, I mean, I know Coach Lovell and Coach Nichols would have liked to finish higher, but as tournament organizers, and you, you couldn't ask for a better situation, because those dates and times and where the seeds match up, they're set in stone. They're, mm -hmm. they're not maneuverable like, you know, some people may be familiar with a NCAA baseball regional where the host school may not be the, the number one seed, but they, yet they play in the late game so be, more crowd will show up. It's not that way in yep. this tournament. So Bipsy playing in the 8 o'clock games kind of a, a, a just a, a, a lanyard benefit for us, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, that's a blessing. Um, you know, I, I guess the only – maybe six o'clock instead of the eight o'clock but, but we'll take a week night game uh, and, and would love to see a lot of people out there to, to support both teams. Can you tell us about some of the players that are likely to have an impact on this tournament you know uh, arguably Bozier Parish has one of the best if not the best player on the men's side and Eric Parrish on the women's side Monette Bolden who scored 38 points the other night and but I know there are a couple of uh, a number of other players from other schools who uh, have had sensational years and are looking to continue that yeah uh, you I'll, I'll start with the women's side you mentioned Monette Bolden for for our team uh, Mo's had a great year this year uh, averaging 20 about 20 little over 20 points a game four assists um, and you mentioned Eric Parrish, who uh, on our men's side, he's Eric's had about five triple doubles this year, which uh, basketball fans will know that's a hard accomplishment to 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 make. Um, on the women's side, Natasha Mack from Angelina, uh, post six four post player. Uh, I've coached against her, and uh, she's a very formidable opponent. Um, from the team perspective, on the women's side. Uh, Trinity Valley and Tyler Junior College, in addition to Angelina, are having great years. Tyler and Trinity Valley have a lot of tradition. Uh, Trinity Valley's won eight national championships, uh, which is which is just amazing. Um, and then on the men's side, uh, you know, any of the teams in our North Division are, are just tough as can be. Uh, Tyson Jolly from Trinity Valley is one of the top players in the country, averaging over 20 points and 12 rebounds a game. He's a transfer from Baylor. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of really good talent, a lot of really good basketball that will be watched. Let's, uh, let's talk about particulars now from the fan side. Give us the breakdown of the price of admission sure. for you know, anybody that wants to come see the tournament. Uh, general admission for adults is $7. Uh, kids 6 and up, or, or kids and students 6 and up, are, it's $4. Children 5 and under are free. You can buy tournament pass for $30, which will get you in every day. Uh, the, the games are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, wrapping up with the championship games on Saturday. Okay, give us uh, real quick, give us the, uh, for more information, where should folks go? Uh, go to NJCARegion14.com uh, to, for more information, and then you can always check out BipsyAthletics.com as well. This championship event uh, really kicks off on Monday, March 4th with a press conference at the Gold Dome. Uh, then the quest for the berth in the NJCAA National Tournament begins with the men's game starting at 1 p.m. on Tuesday, March 5th. I encourage all basketball fans to come out and enjoy this great community event. There will be some outstanding basketball played at Centenary College's Gold Dome. That's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank Coach Rennie for talking with us and taking the time out of his busy schedule to visit with us. John, good luck and 
best wishes on a successful tournament. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you, folks, for watching Cavletics today. Join us again next Friday as we bring you the latest on Bossier Parish Community College Cavalier Athletics. I'm Charlie Cavell, bidding you a good sports day.